Hi guys and welcome back to another Dots Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 24. It is time for round 9 of our career mode and it's my favourite circuit in the game. It is going to be here at the Dutch GP in the TT circuit of Assen and as you can see your eyes do not fool you. It is absolutely bucketing it down. It's rainy and we're starting from the back of the grid to make things interesting against the 120%. Difficulty AI. So here we go then, starting at the back of the grid. This is the first race we're going to be using the brand new liveries. Now the only small criticism I have is that for some reason the colours on the live timing sheet on the left hand side aren't actually up to date. You do still see the uh, red for uh, David Alonso and uh, Joel Kelso who is of course on the CF Moto in our Moto3 career mode. So. This one's going to be an interesting one because I have absolutely just skipped through practice, qualifying, you name it, to get to this point here today. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing for every single round from now on. I think we did it in SoCal and it worked out absolutely wonderfully. So we're going to do that from now on to keep things fun, to keep things exciting and to keep things really close and intense. So already up then up to 13th, 13 positions found, 50% of the race cleared already. Or at least the riders in the race, should I say, as we go into the Wienschlang for the first time of asking. Trying to side through now on the Leopard Honda, which we do. Pekeras might have the inside line, but he doesn't quite go for it into the right-hander for Steckenval. Now, as we get onto the power here, we're just closing in on one of the CF Motos. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that is... Is that David Alonso? Because they've got Alpine stars, so this is the thing... No, it is David Alonso, I do believe. The thing is, I wanted to know about the CF Moto team and the fact that, in fact, it is Joel Kelso. So, for some reason, he's still running Alpine Stars leathers. That's not true. He, he runs IXS, if I'm not mistaken. I know he doesn't use Alpine Stars. He did last season with the uh, the Bowie Motorsports KTM, and of course, he still is with them, but he's changed over with sponsors. So, I'm, I'm surprised to see he's still running Alpine Stars. I guess uh, a little bit of a difference there with... The, uh, the rider transfers part of the Moto3 career mode. Now, as we dive into the right-hand side, this is the Gear Timmer Chicane. We are closing in on teammate David Munoz. He wants to be the star of this team. If he does, he's going to have to get a hurry on because the rider, his teammate, who started from the back of the grid, is now getting through on both him and Joel Kelso going into the Harbock for the second time of asking. And I tell you what, that was effortlessly done. We're already up to ninth place in a lap and two corners. This is good. <laughs> this is a good start. My, my biggest concern here was that I had heard that the AI are really slow in this circuit as we just uh, muscle our way through on Joel Kelso and then on Zuratuza. In fact, Zuratuza's teammate Colin Vier is ahead on circuit and there's a little bit of a gap to the Dutchman. But yeah, I was a bit concerned in this one because I do know that a lot of the players have been talking how easy and non-challenging this circuit has been against the AI and, and traditionally no matter which game it, it's in it does seem to be the AI have a tough time here in Assen and I would probably say that is at quite at large now because we have made up 19 positions already in fact make it 20 in fact almost make it 21 as we tried to go around the outside of not one but two it didn't work out that time but we have closed in to the rear of the Honda Team Asia Man, the man we bought valiantly, uh, fought valiantly with in so called the man ahead of us, Tayo for a Sato. We went to war with Tayo in the last round, we really did. That was also starting from the back of the grid and fighting at the front on the hardest difficulty in the game. Now, into the left hand side for turn 14. I do wonder if once we get to the front, we're able to just churn out the lap times. We'll see, because we are closing in quite rapidly here. Or oh, Tayo really occupying that middle of the circuit there. I was desperate to turn in, but just couldn't quite get the opportunity. Was that Halgado having a look behind him? Ipan Otola to the top of the pile now, number 48. As we get... Look at the speed of, Hon of <laughs> Tayo's Honda, though. It's still very fast, isn't it? Ooh, a bit of contact with Tayo. A little bit of a nudge going into Harbot. That's made me drop a position to Colin Vire now. So maybe it's not going to be quite as easy, then. I'm all for it. I, I do not mind getting pushed beyond the limits. Oh, a little bit of contact there with uh, Colin Vaya. He has the inside line into the tightest corner in this circuit. This is the Struppen corner. 
one of my favourite overtaking spots is turn five. You go for that tight apex, drop it down to first gear, keep it in snug, and then get onto the power to hopefully avoid them getting the slipstream. So now into the Wienschlang, a very fast part of the section of the circuit. 130 miles an hour into that right-hander. Quick change of direction into the left. Bang it on the right-hand side. Start downshifting and keeping it in tight. Ran a little bit deeper there to try and get through on Colin Fire, but uh, seems to have made it stick. Look at that, Zura Tuza getting involved as well with his teammate to try and put the pressure on the World Championship leader. So now into the right-hand side. Good to see Dan uh, Daniel Halgado having a good race here today. For the past couple of races, he's had a tough, tough time. Crashed out in the first lap of Le Mans, if I'm not mistaken. And everywhere else has just not gone well for that uh, number 96. So hopefully for him, he does have a better race. Not really that bothered in terms of uh, other people's championship. But he doesn't. I don't need his help to start getting involved or getting in the way of other riders. It's just a simple case of... Uh, it's nice to see the virtual riders doing well in our career mode. The more riders battling for the win, the more excitement. Jose Antonio Rueda has been given a track limit warning. Must have just touched the apex there onto the right-hander coming out of the GT chicane. We're running it a bit deep there for Harbock. Certainly felt, you know, it certainly felt like I was going to run into too, what, uh, too hot there, but thankfully it didn't materialise. And now David Alonso is getting beaten up. He could lose another position here going into the Osser Broken. In fact, I might go for the lunge into Strubben. Yes, it's it's materialising well. Up on the inside, into the left hand. Oh, I've just took out for Rosato! Oh, no! I've just took out Tayo. Oh, I can't believe I've just done that. I was not expecting him to be in the middle of the corner. That's a clumsy overtake from me. I'm going to get along that penalty, aren't I? That, that, oh. That's a silly mistake. That really is a silly mistake, that. I wanted to get that overtake into turn five. It's my favourite spot to overtake. I should have I should have seen that coming. Well, I haven't had a penalty yet. But let's be honest. <laughs> we definitely deserve a penalty. We absolutely do. That was one of the biggest mishaps I've done all season. I was talking about this in a previous round. I think it was possibly in... The one after Le Mans. Was it Le Mans? Maybe I mentioned it Le Mans, but I did talk about the fact that we haven't had any major mistakes this season. Yes, we crashed in Jerez, but then we remounted and won the race, so that wasn't too bad. But in all in all, we've been relatively clean this season. We've not had any long lap penalties or anything like that, but what I am going to do, I'm going to bite the bullet here. I'm going to take the punishment. I think it would be fair to give myself a long lap penalty. I'm not going to abuse the track limits and then... Oh, I just did anyway. <laughs> Damn it. I'm not going to do it by abusing track limits. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just jump into the on-lap penalty and I'll just take the punishment as it is. I am shocked the game didn't give us a penalty for that. We absolutely deserve a penalty. We really do. So, here we go then. Into the right-hander. Keep it in nice and tight. Please don't mess this up. Nice. I think we've got this. That's a good solid long lap penalty if I do say so myself. But in fact, we've just dropped in just ahead of Tayo Forasata. We've made an overtake. Not one, not two, but possibly three. Joel Kelso went a bit deep. We did get through on the competition. So Tayo Forasata was down to about 13th. We went into long lap penalty, rejoined in 12th ahead of Tayo Forasato. Even was able to get through on Tatsuki Suzuki by using my patented overtake into turn five so all in all that was a good experience <laughs> i've never done the long lap penalty here in uh, in moto three so that went well really really well there i'm happy with the result i think that was the fair thing to do i don't want any of you guys in the comment section uh, telling me i've made oh ruade has gone down that's a perilous spot to lose the front into turn nine as we now go into mandevin getting a bit aggressive with joel kelso there pushing Kelso to the left hand side for the Ducas loot. We're now through. But yeah, I don't want you guys to uh, give me a penalty in the comments section and make me feel bad about taking Tyo for a Sartre out. I've already done it. I've, I've done the punishment now. Well, we're all good. We're all even, yeah? <laughs> we don't discuss that any further. Unless I uh, make a YouTube short, then I guess we'll have to talk about it eventually. But anyway, onto the brakes. Look at that. Round the outside of Joel Esteban. Oh, he gave me a nudge. 
he gave me a nudge after I went round the outside. Clearly wasn't a fan of that overtake, but look at that. All the drama here in Assen. What a race this has been so far. We're definitely going to have to start more races on the back of the grid. This just adds way more excitement against the hardest difficulty AI. It's good stuff. In fact, more wet weather races as well. I think we need more of these uh, wet conditions for good battles. So up on the inside of Zura Tuza then. Bit of a block pass there, sort of just barging him out of the way. As we now dive into the left-hand side. Bit deep there, bit deep. Didn't quite have the confidence to drop down to first gear there. As Zura Tuza cuts off our nose, retaking that fifth place. All right, let's, uh, let's recap then. 2.2 seconds is the gap to Holgado. Maybe that long lap penalty has cost us more than I thought it would have. To be honest, we were catching up quicker on the previous laps. Now, of course, we did have... Yeah, I'm just trying to gauge this a little bit before I actually say what I'm going to say here because the last couple of laps, we've not had good lap times. Apart from the second lap, where we did a 151.6, we've not really had a good, clear bit of track since that point. 52s, uh, a lot of 52s. So this should put us back into the 151s, and that could be crucial for catching up to both the uh, um, Ortola, Alonso, Via, and then possibly catching up to Algado on board the Husqvarna. Now, you may have seen the career mode update video I did either yesterday or today. I don't remember when I uploaded it. Or will, when and will be uploading it as I just run off the circuit. I did show you the team's comparison. And you'll see in that video how strong the Husqvarna's are right now as we completely abuse the track limits going in to the GT chicane. That's a metaphorical slap on the wrist for your content creator here today. But yeah, regarding Holgado and that Husqvarna, it is top of the pile. We are down in about third, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So we're not having the uh, strongest of bikes on the grid, which I'm happy about because I didn't want to make it too easy. I like the fact that we still have to push and work hard. Of course, uh, with the Bowie Motorsports KTM team leading the World Championship and the Team's Championship, I strongly felt that we would be up at the top of the pile, or at least second at the very, very minimum. Wasn't quite the cleanest overtake there in Ortola, but it made it stick. We got through, and the gap is now 1.8 seconds to Algado. I tell you what, if there was an option to tap onto the rear tail unit of that KTM, I'd be doing it right now. Ortola, stick with me, mate. We'll catch up to Alonso and Via probably by the next lap. I am that confident. And even now, we're finding three tenths of a second, but Ortola didn't listen. Ortola wants to get through. Please don't try anything stupid. Oh, I'm not getting it right there into Debolt. Lost a bit of time there. Lost a tenth of a second now to or, uh, Holgado. And I think, in fact, it does look like Colin Vire and Alonso are closing in. But Ortola, come on, mate. You're not helping out our charge to the front here right now. I'm going to have to go for it here. Oh, I did as well. I touched track limits. Oh, Ortola, leave me alone. I'm trying to catch up. That's not good. That is not good to be on three track limit warnings. It's about to be four if I'm not careful. Gotta keep it together here. Making silly mistakes at the midway point of this Grand Prix here in the Dutch TT of Assen. Cross the line though. This is exactly what we needed. Another strong 151 lap time. Onto the brakes. Bring it in. Keep it tight. You can go for a really tight apex there into Harbok. The rumble strip is your friend into the first corner. We are closing in quite quickly now. Alonso third, 1.4 seconds is the gap. Vaya is on a charge as well. He might actually get through on Holgado. Yellow flags out into sector one. Someone's binned it into Harbok. You can see their little disc off the out. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> oh, it was Boazri. Tachikorn Boazri then is out of this Grand Prix. What a disaster for the Honda Team Asia. That, that means two of them have gone down in this Grand Prix. Of course, one of them had a helping hand from a man with 13,500 subscribers. I don't know who that is, but someone took him out. <laughs> I think it could have been me, which, yes, I think it was. <laughs> and then, of course, Boazri went down, probably of his own volition. But if not, he must have had a helping hand going into Turn 1. But anyway, enough about Boazri. It's all about the action kicking off, materialising in front of us. 
it is this chase down of Holgado having a cracking race so far surely a win is on the cards for him eventually he's had a tough season this year on that Husqvarna but I don't doubt his ability I don't doubt his skill and I don't doubt how highly the game must be putting him in this competition but the gap is down to 1.3 I tell you what Colin Viet will have a pop if he has the opportunity the Dutchman in front of the Dutch crowd you better believe he's go for it he will absolutely send it into the GT chicane then careful not to abuse track limits I think I did I did that's another mistake but across the line that's a new fast slap of the race a 150.8 it's game on here in the Dutch TT of Aston it really is I know we've got four track limit warnings though, so we're gonna have to be very very careful this point onwards I might not be able to go full send I'll go full send on Alonso because that's easy enough isn't it can Alonso fight back I don't think he can that's a clean overtake to finally get onto the podium battle for the first time this race that's probably the longest time it's taken me to get into the battle for the podium nine laps or eight and a couple of corners we are now in pursuit the gap is less than a second we have a chance ladies and gentlemen we have an opportunity to get involved for the battle for the win now we go on to the right hand side this is the Steckenwald corner via eight tenths of a second ahead of us in fact six tenths Holgado is the man eight tenths of a second we're catching up again though aren't we this is why I didn't need or, or Tola battling us earlier on because he was just making us lose time valuable time that could be spent battling with the guys here and of course guys if you are enjoying the video don't forget to like and subscribe it certainly helps out the channel and uh, if you're watching at this point and you're still enjoying it then clearly you want to stick around for more Doctor Ace content ooh I lost a bit of time there on the acceleration I think I might have upshifted just a bit too prematurely seemed to have lost that extra oomph going out of uh, turn 13 going into the Hoga Hyde now into Ramshuk now into the GT chicane we are closing in quite rapidly now aren't we being really careful now going into turn 17 I don't want to make that mistake drop back into the 151s but that's absolutely fine as I'll break there at that white little point on the circuit keeping tight to the apex we are closing in we get that slipstream coming out of Struben we could be well on the back of both of them by the GT chicane that is the final corner here in Assen five tenths of a second is the gap this gap is disappearing rapidly really not as tight as I would have wanted but careful on the power bring on the acceleration get in the slipstream and we could be close to this one Alonso's not out of this one either just keep an eye on the number 80 behind us the CF Moto has closed in a bit really fast there into the Wienschlang though really quick it's a bit of a nerve wracking corner that one to be honest and especially now as the race progresses that those tyres just beginning to lose a bit of traction on the right hand side we're going to notice them this the most as we now go into this sector here we've got Mandevin and then for the right hander again of the Ducas loop so let's see how we fare into turn 10 oh it's not feeling quite comfortable we're definitely at that point now there seems to be a massive drop off when you reach the middle point of the graphic on the bottom right corner of your screen yeah it's really struggling it's really struggling even to the Muamir we're still just having that issue to turn in on the right oh I got really close to the ramshaw I had to hit the brakes there no that's gonna be a penalty I, I got away with that somehow I've just absolutely punted into Colin Vaya they break so slowly for the GT chicane oh and what's happened to Holgado's tyre looks like he's he got, I don't know, got a sticker on it or something. Yeah, yeah I'm talking to you, Elgardo. You had to have a look behind him to see what was going on. <laughs> you talking to me? <laughs> yeah, there's something on his tyre. Is that just a glitch? It looks like he's got a sticker on it. <laughs> he's rode over a sticker at some point during this race. And that's what we're seeing now. In fact, his tyre looks really weird, actually. Looks like it's uh, not even hooked up properly. Weird. Anyway, I threw on Colin Vire, and we're now up to second place the highest position we've been in this Grand Prix there is the sticker on the Husqvarna 
Holgado pulling away though. Look at the speed he's got on his KTM or Husqvarna, of course. Very fast as we now dive into the right-hander against the FS250. Keep it in tight. Yeah, we're, we're closing in. We've got rapid speed on the left-hand side. But I do feel we lose a bit of time on the right-handers. That's where it's going to cost me. Fastest man on track from earlier, of course, don't forget. So we now go into the left-hander, keep it in tight to the apex. Nicely done for me. And then again on the right for the Mandarin corner, we are closing in. Where do we go for the lunge? Where will we be close enough? This is now a thinking game. We've got to try and plan this one out rather than just being reactive and just going for the first lunge. I would say that we stick with him now for the couple of lap times and then go for it when we see that opportunity arise. I think it would probably be around this corner here, Debolt, or possibly into my favourite corner, into Struben. It would be very nice to get him into the Beanschlang. It would be a bit of a surprising overtake as well as we are in the slipstream. In fact, Harbock, it could be coming up might want to go for it first and just start pulling out the lap times. I think we've still got pace, you know. Oh, in fact, there it is. It's opened. It's opened. He should have closed the door there, Danny. You really should have done. Ran it a bit deep, though, to the Osser broke, and he might come back on through. There's that yellow wheel. Keep it in tight. Leaning on the Husqvarna. Downshift to first. Keep it in tight. Keep it tight. I think we've got it. Oh, he's fast on the exit, though, isn't he? But it's okay, we've occupied that spot. Now it's our turn to defend. And now it's time to defend, apologies. <laughs> it's opportunity defence for us right now. There we go, into the beach line. The gap is, of course, too close to call at the stage of this Grand Prix. Tenth and a half. Where is he going to close up? Is he going to be able to get back on through? I mean, he has led this Grand Prix for 12 laps. His tyres are not going to be in a condition... To start duking it out for the victory. A little bit nervous going into DeBolt. It's a corner I'm not particularly fond of. I like the corner, but I'm just not good at it. I always seem to struggle and lose time into turn nine. That's a bit deep there for the right-hander. Here comes Holgado. He didn't hesitate there at all, did he? Yeah, we've got to be really careful that, because if he smells blood, he'll attack. And I think... Those right-handers is where I'm going to lose the most time. I've got to be honest with you. I've really got to be honest with you. I did not expect this race to be as close as it is. I really felt that once we had the speed, we got those lap times cooking in and uh, getting it all perfectly done, cooking on gas, I think then we would have been leading this Grand Prix with ease. But it hasn't gone that way. It really hasn't. We've uh, sort of fumbled. We're, we're still stuck on the gas burner on the oven. We, we can't seem to get it to light. We've got the old, uh, what, what do they call those little petrol things you press on it? I don't even know. I should have prepared that one. <laughs> you know, the little lighter fluid thing, the little engaged things, you press them, you press them. Oh, never mind about that. Oh, oh, oh God, I went up on the inside. That was an aggressive lunge from the number 96. That was very well impressed. I guess that's why you don't start faffing around thinking about items for appliances in your house. Whilst Daniel Holgado's racing you. Look at the speed though, around the outside. Can we go into the Beanschlang in the lead? We certainly can. That's marvellous. That is absolutely brilliant. Into the Russian up. We <laughs> just realised we lost eight tenths of a second. This is bringing the battle from behind. Just cast your gaze to the bottom left hand corner of your screen. And look how many riders are all fighting for this one. Oh, look at that. Holgado, whoa! He really chanced his arm to go around the outside there, didn't he? Oh, no way. I can't believe he went for that lunge there. Did not expect to see that coming. Oh, oh God. Oh, man, I almost lost the front. I wasn't expecting to see yellow wheels going into the right-hander. Oh, we've got a match in our hand here, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a fight. It's game on here in Assen. Oh, look at that fight back into the left-hander. He can't contend with our overtaking. In turn, this is bringing everyone involved in this Grand Prix. I don't dare to look behind me. I really don't. Across the line, 
every single pit board's going to be out here. Look at that. I mean, it usually is anyway, but it, <laughs> a lot of ride is close. I even see Tyre Forasata's uh, pit board there. Hopefully, he's not going to come back into the fight. Ooh, Colin Fire got close then. The Dutch crowd will be on their feet. If Colin Vire gets the victory here, they will erupt. There's no roof here in Aston, but you better believe if there was one, it would erupt. Colin Vire is about to put the pressure on. Didn't even finish what I was trying to say earlier on, and there's not even a chance of me getting through it now, as Colin Vire is bringing on the power. Can't wait to see what's going to happen here. <laughs> Brilliant battle with Holgado as well. Really showed our metal against the number 96. Oh, Colin. I would have gone for the inside line if I was him. I'm quite strong when I go for that wider line into the Veenschlang. You can't, you can't really get me if you're on the left-hand side. But if you go on the inside, I've got to give you room. It's definitely an overtaking opportunity for Colin Vire. Well, I'm going to try and get away from him now. I think we've done the, the fighting. We've done the part that was most exciting. Now it's time to just stand on both feet, stand tall, and keep the AI at bay. The hardest difficulty in the game, pushing us to the limit here in MotoGP24's career mode. Holgado's now gone back up to the uh, second position of the roster. And, oh, rear tyre sliding as we went into the right-hander there. Look how many riders are behind us there, look. Look at that. You love to see it. That's typical Moto3 racing. Anyone from the top 10 can win this one. All depends who's going to be the bravest. Who's going to be the man with the biggest cojones here in Assen. Cross the line, that's not a bad lap time. That's a good enough lap time to get me back in to that rhythm from earlier. I'm going to full send it now. This is it. We've got three tenths of a second. They can't overtake us with a gap like that. If they do, then that's an absolutely monumental lunge. Seven tenths of a second found into the first split. I think we're breaking them. I think we're pulling away. This could be two very solid lap times to hold on to this lead. What a race. What a Grand Prix this has been. From the back of the grid, in the rainy conditions here in Assen. Not a single bit of practice or qualifying against the hardest difficulty AI and we're right here battling it out for the win I love making these videos I swear brilliant brilliant game I am really enjoying this one I hope you guys are too and I hope you're still sat on the edge of your seat if you're standing even better and if I'm on the big telly double thumbs up for you <laughs> always wanted to be on the big telly Get it Chromecast into your TV, ladies and gentlemen. Or even if you're watching on mobile, I salute you nonetheless. Four tenths of a second is the gap. Maybe I can't get too excited just yet. Three tenths of a second. The gap is coming down, isn't it? Don't tell me he's got something up his sleeve. I'm putting in a solid lap time here. Rear tyre is uh, really beginning to struggle in those right-handers, though. And the worst part is that the final corner is a right-hander. So we've got to be absolutely on it here as we get onto the brakes early. Go for that tight apex, run across the kerb if you have to, change the direction at the last moment, and get on the power. Across the line, is it a good lap time? It's pretty much bang on from the previous one. You can't fault the effort in those last two laps. Is Holgado going to be close enough for a lunge? That gap has come down dramatically though compared to the last lap. Three tenths it is now. On the last lap, it was six or seven. I think he's going to have a pop at me somewhere. Bit deep there for the Ossobroke, and we might be in inviting him in into battle again. Strubbing corner, that's a bit deep. Ah, oh, those are the yellow wheels. He's coming. Holgado, brace yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Danny Holgado is approaching. Going to get in the middle of the track here. Don't want him to pick up the slipstream. Dive into the right hand of the Veenschlang. Oh, the rear tyres really struggling to grip uh, there on the right. The Pirelli rubber is holding on for a little bit longer. Just one more lap, ladies and gentlemen. One more lap to win a thriller here in Assen. Oh, look at the gap. He might be close enough for Lundgren to debolt. I'm not that strong here into turn nine. It's still close, but he has not shown a wheel. 
I thought he would have gone for it there. You know, I really did. Bit deep for Mandevin. Is Algado coming through? He's not close enough. I think we've done it. If he can't catch us going in to the Hoggerhide, I think we've done it. Two tenths of a second it is to uh, uh, Holgado and Vaya. It's coming down dramatically. Does Holgado have a lunge? He's gone for the lunge. But we're going to fight back immediately. Look at that. Retaliation job. The Dr. Ace 101 class is available. How to fight back immediately under pressure to create a diamond. Look at that. Oh, that's magnificent. Holgado sent it. He really did. But yet again... We are superior. Brilliant. Absolutely amazing race. Who the hell beat me for the fastest lap time? <laughs> My God. Save that screenshot, ladies and gentlemen. I look forward to looking at that in the future. What a race. What a season. What a game. Well, Holgado second via third. That does change the dynamic of the championship, especially for Furusato, who got punted by your race winner. And Halgado in second did take 20 points to add to his tally up to 7th place. Whew. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm knackered now. I need to go and get a beverage. Thank you very much for watching this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed. If you did, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in tomorrow for more MotoGP 24 content. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.